I'm going to talk about systems-led leadership. But before I tell you what I mean by that, I'm going to talk about some of my prior thinking and some things I think I got wrong. A few years ago, I wrote a report called Tackling Heropreneurship. And what I was reacting to was the fact that many of the students who were applying to the program I was working in and the other ones I saw around the world were applying saying, I want to be a social entrepreneur. I just have to figure out my business model and my issue. And what that was telling me was that there was this Silicon Valleyization of social change that people thought you needed to be a founder to create change. And that the definition of social entrepreneurship had somehow become just a business model for change. And to me, social entrepreneurship is, uses whatever tool you might need to help impact change towards a problem. And one tool is starting a social enterprise. But there's also activism, and there's changing policy, and there's working with existing actors, and sharing knowledge, and giving information away, and whatever tool you might need to make a shift in something complex, which then requires first understanding what that complex thing is before you reach for your tool. Right? And so I, I wrote about that, and I gave a TEDx talk last year about this, and I talked about how when we teach business, we talk about organizational growth, the individual business growing. How are you going to outcompete your competitors, gain more customers, gain more market share, you know, gain more money in your bank account? And, and if we teach impact the same way, we're saying, how is your organization going to grow its impact? Get bigger. But the reality is that system change looks more like this. It's complicated. It needs, it eventually, in most systemic problems, is going to need government. It's definitely going to take more than one actor. And no one organization is going to scale to the size of those problems. And that takes a different type of leadership skill. And so when I gave that talk, I talked about system change leadership. And I had all these people write to me afterward or come up to me after talks. And they'd say, Daniela, man, you know, I was a social entrepreneur. <laughs> Turns out I'm a system change leader. <laughs> and I'm like, uh oh, I'm not sure that's what I meant. Right? And so um, I realized that when a lot of people are talking about system change, they're talking about this role. That this kind of like mythical, but there's lines connecting all this, and it's basically this Harry Potter style role saying, OK, I'm a system change leader, and I'm going to change the system, right? And that is leaving us only with the very large egos that think they can do that. And the rest of our students who are now saying, gosh, I thought social entrepreneurship was hard, and you had to get an organization to get really, really big, and now I have to change the whole system, and it looks complicated, and I don't really know if I can do all that, so I'm going to sit over here, right? So how, in order to engage the rest of our students, we need to say, you don't need to be a founder to be systems led. And you also don't need to take it all on. Actually, you can't, because there isn't that role. And so if we use, I now start using this term system led leadership because system change leadership is I am the leader who is going to change the system. System led leadership is the system is leading me to figure out how I might contribute with my unique skills of myself or my organization. Right? And so therefore, that requires, I would define it as designing your personal or organizational strategy based on an understanding, at least a partial understanding, of a system. You're never going to understand it all. right? And so that also requires you to kind of set a vision or a goal for how what might be better, what might change, but knowing that you'll never be able to take credit for it, and you'll never be able to do it alone. So we're measuring things outside of just, here's what I'm achieving. It's what's happening over there. Because even if I close my eyes and sit down for a while, that's going to change. Right? So that means we need to talk about different roles, not just this like magical hero system change leader, but the different roles, like the role of convener, which is what Ashoka Yu is doing with us right now, bringing people together, saying, hey, do we want to map systems together? We want to set some collective goals. We want to learn from each other. right?" The role of educator, someone who is um, sharing knowledge across a sector. Sorry, these graphics are supposed to be different. But who's sharing knowledge across a sector and so that others can build upon those things. Or maybe like solutions journalism, educating the public or others to know what's happening or how, what issues they might want to get involved in. Or the role of a gap filler. Sure, I'm going to start 
something new, a new venture, a new initiative, but I'm not just starting another solar company and I'm competing with these others. Instead, I'm starting something that's building on what's already there and trying to contribute to a more complicated solution network. Or I might be a connector, and an example I often use for that is an organization called RARE, based in DC. They have 40 years experience of doing environmental behavior change for the environment. And so instead of viewing those other nodes as competitors for other ocean funding, they realize, well, we've been around 40 years and we got this big. And if we're around another 240 years, we might get this big. But we're never going to be in every single coastal community by then. So let's take what we've learned and codify it. And they created a center for behavior change in the environment so that they can start to train other people and share that knowledge so that other people can build on that. So if we all start taking that knowledge and we all start doing that, and we all start taking fr from where we are, using our system-led approach, adding a little bit more, well, great. Then we can start linking up and building this system. Social investing, in some ways, is a bit antithetical to that. So just like starting a social enterprise is one tool, social investing is one tool, but we need funding. That the social investing tool is good at making a bet on one node and saying, I'm betting on you. Get bigger. Get bigger. Come on. You know, because I'm going to get something back from this, and I want you to win, right? But actually, we need funding, and, there, and more and more of it's coming that's saying, I want to look at this whole thing and figure out how we might get in the game and contribute. Because traditional uh, philanthropy and, and social investing is more like, oh, gosh, recidivism organizations. Which one of you is going to win? How are you unique? How are you better? OK, number two, I'm picking you. Oh, you didn't fix it. Your fault. Next one, not pick you. Right? No, we got to get in the game and figure out how we can contribute to this in a wider way. And so when I wrote that report, Tackling Heropreneurship, a few years ago, I added this question. I said, imagine if every single social investment fund, accelerator program, every social business plan competition asked this question, which is, imagine, I mean, tell me the five or six organizations that you've spoken to who are working in the same sector as you, same geography, whatever, and how are you building upon their successes and failures, right? That question would at least just change people's mind to think, gosh, how can I build on what's there? But I only got half the question right. That's only the first part. The more important part is this. And how is your work going to contribute to their impact? I don't want you to just show me how you're going to grow. I want to show me how why what you're doing matters so that everybody else's work is better off because you exist. If we asked that every time we started to teach it's different from teaching social business growth. Fine, teach that too. But if you want to teach systemic problem solving, ask people this question instead of how unique, how you're going to win. Right? Like, OK, guys, I'm, I'm going. you got two hours, global poverty. One of you is going to win $20,000. Go. Give me your, you know, right? We need to teach building upon a, a understanding. So I designed this tool. It's called the Impact Gaps Canvas. I always say it's common sense just not common practice. Common sense that before I go in, if I really want to solve a problem, I would want to understand a bit about the challenge and a bit about what's already being tried so that I can decide which tool I want to pick up to contribute to change. So this is available online uh, for, for anyone to use. And we turned it into a competition called Map the System. And it's um, running at 30 universities around the world right now, McConnell Foundation funded uh, at 12 universities across Canada. And instead of winning because you have the best idea, you win because you have the best understanding of the problem and multiple gaps. Because if you only identify, gosh, I learned about the problem, I learned about the solutions, and the gap is my idea. Now, you know, it's what, what policies could change? What can we build upon what's already being tried? And we created a new pot of funding. We call it apprenticing with a problem funding. Because what we realized is that there was only one pot of funding that students were applying for the business plan competition. But so many students just wanted to get their foot in the door around an issue that they might care about. And so that funding allows you to go get an internship, do some research, get a job in a sector, and try something out. I wrote most of this up. A lot of this up in a little toolkit. It's available online. It's funded by, by Recode as well and par created a partnership with Recode. Um, so please check that out. 
Um, and I want to tell you one quick more story. Of, uh, it relates to Ashoka. So there's a Ashoka Globalizer program that's run by uh, um, a man named Odin Mulevan. And Ashoka's always talked about system change. And when his work is taking these Ashoka fellows, people have been doing this work 20, 30, 40 years, right? At some of them. And, and they do this 12-week program. And McKinsey helps them accelerate their organizations. And it used to be kind of focused on that. But now what he realized is actually they spend the first half of that time trying to come down to this one sentence which they call targeted system change. These are people who are deep in the problem, deep in understanding, and it still takes them five or six weeks to figure out, understand the system and how they might want to change it. And we're kind of assuming it's already there before we walk into the hackathon, right? And here's an example. One of the groups was selling low-cost insurance for, for in, in garment factories for economically poor communities, right? So they went through this program and they mapped the system and they probably had a big vision of like, you know, everyone having access to health care, but that's really hard and that's a long way away. And so how, what can we achieve sooner than that? And so they, they realized, well, actually, the sentence that we could help achieve in the next 5, 10, 20 years in the short term is that there's a marketplace for low-cost insurance for the poor. Imagine that mind shift. The week before, you're like, okay, let's try and get in more garment factories. We're selling low-cost insurance for the poor. Now your goal is a node towards system change, which is there is a marketplace for low-cost insurance for the poor. That means you're trying to create competitors. You're trying to teach other people how to do what you do. You're trying to change policy. You're trying to advocate. And what they've said is that people who go through this program close down whole departments and start up whole policy organizations, advocacy organizations, right? So we need to give our students examples like that so they can start to think in how they might contribute to wider change, not just start another social venture. Thank you very much.